Welcome folks, Jason Hoppy here to walk you through how to add steam or in this case smoke and make it look like steam to an image. So what I want to do is I want to take this steam and I want to put it in this image with a cup of coffee. And so selecting the steam is going to be a really tricky thing. So there's a couple of things that we want to do first off. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that this background is completely black. So I'm going to go into the window menu and call up my info panel. And I'm going to hover my cursor over this window here. And I want to see how much information I have in this black. So you can see here with the um, info panel here, it's reading, as I hover over this, it's reading like 12 or 13. And that's not a true black. True black is going to be zero red, zero green, and zero blue. So what I want to do is I want to call up my levels. So I'm going to do a command L on here, call up my levels. And with my levels panel, you can see here that my darkest area, there's a space between the darkest area and my shadow slider. I want to move that all the way over and down. And you can see as I move that over and my cursor is hovering here, pay attention to the info panel right here. You can see that I started off and it was about 12 or 13 and now it's going to be like one or zero. In fact, I want to get that down to zero because I want that background to be as black as possible. Okay. So now what I want to do with this is I want to invert this entire image. And so I'm going to go under my image mode. I'm going to do invert, which is going to be command I. So right there, image adjustments, invert. And this is going to basically take that black background and invert it. So it's going to give me a completely white background. And I can tell this is completely white because when I use my info panel, I get 255 in all of my readings here. And that's going to give me a completely white image. So I want that extreme. I want the black that I inverted and then I get absolute white. If you don't do this, you're going to get this ghosty image with what I'm going to show you next. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to just jump into my eraser here and I'm going to have a nice soft eraser and I'm just going to erase some of this steam that I don't want to have in here or this smoke. Then I'm going to grab my rectangular selection tool. And I'm going to put a selection over my image. Okay. Now this is a fairly large image and if I go under the image image size here, one of the things I want to see that this is, um, in fact, let's go to this right here with inches and we'll see how big this is. So this is 48 inches. So something like this isn't really what I want to have. So what I want to do is I'm going to click off the resample here and I'm actually going to scale this down. I'm going to make this high res, but I'm going to scale this down to about half the size right here. So, cause I don't need it that huge. And the reason why is because I'm going to capture this as a brush. And if the brush is too big, it's going to not be able to capture the brush. So reducing the size to have the image down helps me when I capture this brush. I'm going to put a selection over my brush. Now, anything that is completely white is going to be, end up being transparent when I create this brush. So with a selection around my object, I'm going to go into the edit menu and I'm going to define the brush preset. If the brush preset is not available, that means your image size is possibly too large. So that's one of the reasons why I reduce this down. So I'm going to call this my steam right here, and I'm going to capture that as a brush. And of course, once you right click with your brush active, it's going to put your brush down there at the very bottom of your brush panel to go with. Now I'm going to jump over to my coffee cup and I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to my layers panel. I'm going to create a new layer here, and this is going to be my steam layer. And I'm going to pick white as my color and my color picker. I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to right click and choose my steam here. And it's awfully large. Right now it's 2215 pixels. So I'm going to use my left bracket. I'm going to reduce it down in size. Now I definitely want to do this on its own layer here. And I'm just going to plunk that steam right in there. And there I get my steam. Now, if I would like to double this steam up to get more, I can select the steam layer, hit Command or Control J, and this doubles it up. So I get more steam going on. I'm not going to do that right now, but we can keep that in our back pocket just in case we need it. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to right click on the steam. I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And then I'm going to go into the filter menu 
I'm going to choose Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm going to blur this steam a little bit because as it starts to get away from the cup, it starts to dissipate. And that's going to blur that a little bit. And I'm also going to do my Command or Control T for Transform because I'd like to distort this. So when you do a Smart Filter, which is the Gaussian Blur that I just did on here, it doesn't show up when you do your Transform. It will show up once we click OK. So I'm going to do my Command or Control T for Transform. I'm going to right click inside my Transform and I'm going to um, do Perspective here, which is going to basically widen this at the top. Okay, So it creates a little bit of bigger puff of steam. And either double click inside your Transform bounding box or hit Return. Then you'll see the Gaussian blur comes back. Now, what I'd like to do here is I'd like to have a little bit in focus and going out of focus. So on this Smart Filter mask, I'm going to grab my gradient tool, which is G. And if it doesn't bring it up, it may bring up the paint bucket tool. Go over there and grab your gradient tool. I want to make sure I'm doing a linear gradient. And I want to make sure that my default colors are here. And then when I can click on this, there's my default colors going from black to white because I'm doing a mask. Black conceals, white reveals. So here, it's going to start with white wherever I click, and it's going to end with black. So it's going to end up showing me the Gaussian blur, and then it's going to then fade that out to no Gaussian blur. So what I want to do, I want to start at my filter. I want to start at the top because that is going to show me everything. And then I'm going to drag down right there. And that's the thing that's going to go ahead and give me my steam. Now I did that exactly backwards because black conceals, white reveals because I unfortunately had the reverse button on. So if I drag from the top to the bottom here, you'll see that the white is where I start here with my gradient and the black is what comes down. So white is where it shows through more of my Gaussian blur. And there I have it. So really cool and easy way to go ahead and add steam or if you have smoke. Getting it from the background and putting it into or basically defining it as a brush works absolutely fantastic. And you can go in here and you can, if you'd like, you can go ahead and create different colored steam too. If I go back to my brush here and I grab my brush again and I go in on a new layer here and I go in and I click, I could do steam or brush or um, in any color here. If I'd like to do different color steam simply just by changing the color of my brush. And that's how easy it is to grab smoke or steam and put it into an image and then blend it in to make it look realistic.